So, welcome to our packed talk on uh, Breakman and Jenkins. Um, we're going to be talking about static analysis for Ruby on Rails. And um, so, I'm Justin Collins. If you search the internet for President B, you'll find me on many, many sites. So, if you went to the talk this morning, uh, all my information is out there, including musical tastes. And yeah, I am Tim Zell, and I'm privileged enough to work with him and put up with him. We work at an at and and I've been a software developer for many years, but now that I became a security person, security architect in the last three years. Um, so this is one approach that you know, we handle um, security um, at a source, right, literally. So our philosophy here is a light, light touch. Right, we want to use tools to detect the uh, security defects early in the phase. And we want to do that without <coughs> having a lot of impact on the development workflow. Because, you know, we all know that developers are busy. They have a lot of feature requests, feature requests, feature requests, and they have deadlines. Right, so if we're going to go tell them, like, you know, hey, uh, do this thing and do this thing right, and by the way, you run this tool and analyze your results. Most likely they are going to do that, and or they may tell like, I'll do it later. So the approach that we took was that you know we're gonna um, get, we're gonna run this tool on your page and you wouldn't even know it. So in fact, we didn't even tell them. We work with the QA automation guys. Do we build the system? We set up this uh, continuous uh, integrate this with the continuous integration, and we got the results, and we just presented to them on hey, look at the results. Right. So that's a, that's our philosophy behind this light touch, and of course, the touch point comes from. Gary McGraw's uh, different touch points in the software and security deployment life cycle. So, you know, um, when I started, I started doing this uh, security reviews and penetration testing and work backwards into uh, architecture um, uh, security requirements. But the code review here is number one, right? And it's hard for us to do because uh, if, uh, you'll see in a minute that, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, good tools for writing, uh, for scanning Ruby on Rails applications. So why do we want to do this? Well, you know, this is a different cost curve that we you have seen this. This original work was started by Barry Bain at USC. And this particular slide is by uh, Scott Pembler. So basically, you know, the, the cost goes up, the cost of fixing defects goes up as you um, later, go later in the cycle. So what we usually have been doing is application security testing or uh, penetration testing later in the state. So we want to move this all the way down to like the very beginning. So this is how our approach and our tools uh, come in. Um, so a lot about static analysis and dynamic analysis, all the penetration testing. I mean, we all know this. Um, you know, um, penetration testing, you actually uh, replicate the uh, production environment. You, uh, you, know, you can scan the entire application stack, including the configuration. But you know you have to uh, set up. You have to, uh, you get the symptoms, not the root causes. You know you have to set up the server, and you, know, you have to do it during the QA cycle, which is quite late. And you get the incomplete review of the running app. And static analysis, you know, you can do it in the early, uh, early phases of development as you're writing code or you're checking in code, and you can integrate this into the development workflow. And you know you don't need to deploy anything because um, it works with your source code. And the typical um, drawbacks of static analysis, like, you, know, you need access to the source code, and you know, you're limited to, your view is limited to the code, not the entire application stack. And they both, they both approaches have um, you know, one thing pretty annoying, that's a false positive, and just a little bit get into how we address false positives in our approach. So um, these are the tools that, you know, there are a lot of tools for C, C++, C and, you know, uh, I wouldn't mention names, but this is a OWASP conference. But uh, you know, C sharp, uh, you go, it goes all the way back to Lint, you know, file grind to my freeware tools, a lot of commercial vendors for C sharp, Donut, and Java. And Ruby, there are some tools for doing static analysis, but they're not particularly for security, uh, because you know, Ruby being the interpreted language and garbage collector language, you know, you don't have a lot of issues there. They have other issues. And then Ruby on Rails, there was basically no um, tools, no usable probably a little tool for finding um, security defects in the 
Ruby on Rails code, and that's where breakpoint comes in, and that's where testing comes in. Um, yeah, so I so, um, so if you're using a tool like Breakman, um, this is kind of the workflow. Uh, you get the latest code, and then you run the tool, and then you look at the results, and then you try to tell somebody about them. Um, but then when the code changes, you do it again, and you do it again over and over again. So, um, and I, this is what happened to me, basically. Uh, I wrote the tool, and then I'm like, oh, I'll run it on the code. Oh, the code changed, now I have to run it again. So of course what we really like to do is we'll just relax and we'll write tools that will tell us um, when there's a problem. So this is kind of our goal. So, um, so Breakman is the static analysis tool that we have. Um, that's the website. It's free and open source, so you can go download it. So how many of you are Ruby on Rails developers? Don't be shy. Okay. And how many of you are familiar with Ruby on Rails? Yeah, okay. Okay, so the main thing is, if you were going to write a stack analysis tool for Ruby, you'd be like, oh man, where do I even start? And if you look on the internet, there's there are a couple guys who have made some progress in this area, but it's like, oh man, you can almost do anything. So how do I even know where to start? Well, the nice thing is with Ruby on Rails, because they have a very structured approach, um, and I guess I should say Ruby on Rails is the web, a web framework that runs on Ruby. Um, but because they have this idea of like, well, if you just put things in the normal places, then everything works on default. So that makes it easy if you're writing a tool to analyze the programs, because you can you know, oh, well, the default view for this will be in this file directory in a file named this, so it's very easy to find. So that gives us actually an advantage um, when we're doing static analysis. So the way Breakman works is, uh, first, of course, it parses the code. It does some cleanup, um, some simplification of the abstract syntax tree. Um, and then it looks at the results of that, runs multiple checks on it, um, and then it generates a report. So here's the list of some of the vulnerabilities it detects, all the standard, basically the standard ones, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, command injection, redirects, file access, um, basically most of the things that you could do statically. Um, and I should point out that as vulnerabilities come out, like in specific versions, we add those in. So um, it knows if you're running a specific version, it'll say, oh, well, for this version, okay, there was this security problem. So here's an example. This is a template <coughs> using ERB, the default template. <coughs> um, here we're saying, um, please put this query parameter into the page. So. For Rails 2.0, this would be a cross-site scripting vulnerability. Um, in Rails 3, they <coughs> escape by default. So in Rails 3, you would actually have to do a little bit more work and say, um, please output this without escaping it. So if you were to run breakman against code like this, you would get a warning like this. So an escape parameter value, you get the line number, and then you get um, uh, the code as Breakman would see it. So, another example. So, here we're doing a database query and we're just going to drop uh, this variable right in. Um, and here, so we basically just have a local variable, we're assigning a query parameter to it and dropping it into our SQL statement. So, we know this is wrong, right? So Rails developers that raise your hands? Okay, okay. So um, you should be doing a parameterized query. So Breakman notices this, you'll get a warning like this, and here you can see that the actual value of the variable is what Breakman will, will report. So here's a little bit more <coughs> example. Um, here we have an app. We're at the application controller level, so that's like the highest controller on the 
the inheritance hierarchy. Um, we have a method and we're just going to set the user variable to some user that we get out of the database. Um, so then in our user controller, this is kind of a contrived example, but we're going to have this filter where we call that on any action that we do. So we have an action show, and that will call the set user method before it actually does the show, show action. So then we have our view, and let's say um, we like the user to be able to put some HTML into their bio, but we think we stripped out everything that's bad, so we'll just use raw. Right? So the basic flow is you're going to go to the user controller, then it's going to go back to the application controller, call that filter, then it's going to go back to the user controller, then it's going to go down to the actual view, and that's where we're going to catch the error. So you'll get a warning something like this. So here you can see this is the actual value that we put into that user variable. So if you were just looking through your views, or if you were using a tool that, let's say, uses regular expressions to look for problems, it's not going to find this, okay? Or, and you probably, you may or may not notice uh, what's going on here. So one more example. Um, this is a model as generated by Rails. So um, there's nothing in it because it, it pulls everything from the database. Um, here is the corresponding controller that it generates. And here you can see it's creating a new user um, straight from the query hash. So how many people are familiar with the mass assignment? Okay, and how many are you are familiar with the issue that this causes? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this will basically take the, all the parameter values that you're passing in and it will put those directly into the database. So if you're not restricting anything, um, we'll show an example later, um, if admin is one of your attributes, then people can just add that into the query parameters admin true or one, and now they're admins. So assuming that you're not restricting access, you will get a warning that's like this. So, so now we have a tool that will... If you, have, if you use attribute accessible, then you will not get this warning. Uh, and if you disabled mass assignment, you will also not get this warning. Um, so now we have the tool that's giving us the warnings, but we're still running it manually. So that's where um, Jenkins comes in, or formerly Hudson, um, <coughs> which is an open source continuous integration server. And basically, it's uh, how many of you use Hudson or Jenkins? Okay. So the thing, the reason this slide is so generic is because you can almost do anything with it. Um, but in general, you're going to monitor some conditions. In our case, uh, you know. A, a source code repository. Um, when certain things happen, someone checks in some code, we'll run some jobs against it, and then we'll report some results. So in our case, that would be, okay, someone commits some code, we're going to run Drakeman, and then we're going to return some results. So we actually have a, a, a plugin that integrates with another plugin to give you these nice graphs. And it basically works, like I said. So it'll run Drakeman against the code, It'll grab all the warnings, and then you'll get these nice graphs uh, out of it. So we'll show you uh, in more detail in the demo, but you get something like this, right? Warnings, uh, what type of warnings you get, what kind of distribution of high, medium, and low um, <coughs> which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, if you want to use Breakman, this is how easy it is. Um, if you are a Ruby person here, <coughs> probably familiar with installing gems, you go to your Rails application and you run Breakman. Of course, there's a lot of other options that you can add on, but if you just want to try it out, this is all it takes to run it. Um, and we have some resources which um, can uh, find later when they post the slides, I assume. Uh, 
Um, and now we're going to go to the demo. So I'm going to talk and Tim is going to type. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a new Rails application. Uh, and this is using Rails 3 something, 3.09, something like that. So if we just run break man, See, it notices it's Rails 3, and this is kind of the output you'll get, and you'll see it didn't find anything. Um, if this was a Rails 2 application, you actually would get at least one warning, which would be the default routes warning, but they disabled that in Rails 3, so we get uh, nothing. So now we're going to turn this into a Git repo, so we can use it with Jenkins. So we've initialized it. Added all the files, going to do a commit. Alright, so now if we, if we go to Jenkins or Hudson as this is labeled, um, we're going to create a new job. And this is like sort of like the <coughs> bare minimum setup that you need to do. So, freestyle software project. It's running locally, that's why it's kind of slow. Also, it's Java, that's also why it's kind of slow. Alright, so now we're going to point it to. Let me see. Uh, no. Go ahead and scroll down. It normally wouldn't look this, you know, squished together. This is just so you guys can see it. So we're going to put in the file, the path to our uh, repository. Did you write that down? Nope. Uh, you gotta start with file. And 
to click on one of the buildings. So down at the bottom you'll see Great Command Vulnerability Results, uh, zero warnings, no new warnings since apparently since yesterday. Um, all right, so you want to go back, and we're just going to add, we're just going to run some basic scaffolding generation. So we're going to have a user, a name, a password, and then just for fun, uh, an admin flag. By the way, this is not a recommended way of doing your own authentication. <laughs> <laughs> generated some new files, we're going to add them to the repository and commit them. So normally what you would do is you would set up Hudson or Jenkins to pull your repository. Um, and it's basically like, it's just like a cron job kind of thing. Uh, it's part of the job when you set it up, but um, we found out when doing demos, it's, you don't actually want it to be doing that. So we'll manually go back and run the build, another build. So for Hudson or Jenkins, it actually will keep a local copy of your code. So when you when you change code, it'll actually um, it'll do like you know an SVN update or git pull. So you're only pulling the changes. So now you can see we have three new warnings. Yeah, um, go ahead and look at them. So we get kind of this kind of again. It'll look better when it's not on a huge screen. So you can see we, uh, there's some warnings about these files. If you go to details, um, so you can see we have unprotected mass assignment, possibly an unprotected redirect. You see the priority on that's low because it's probably not really a problem. And you can see we have a general warning that mass assignment was not restricted using attribute accessible. So if we go to the mass assignment, if we click on the file name there, We'll actually get right in the code highlighted where that error came from or where that warning came from. So we have more time. Yeah. So we'll, we'll run, uh, we'll show you guys the HTML output as well uh, against a, uh, a Rails 2 application. And this is uh, actually, what break, one of the applications that Breakman runs its automated tests against. So you'll see a lot more warnings and they'll be really kind of goofy, but this will give you an idea of what you would get um, with the HTML report. So you get some basic information. You can see the Rails version 2.311. Um, all the checks that were run. Uh, you can see we have 36 security warnings, 29 of which are uh, high confidence warnings. So, can you guys see that? Or is it, can you make it a little bit bigger? Control shift plus. Okay. Um, so you can see command injection. Um, we detected that you're devaluing parameters, um, a general warning about default routes. If you click on one of the warnings, you'll see a little code snippet that's showing you um, uh, where, in, you know, a little piece of code, this is where the warning came from. Um, any particular warnings that you guys might be interested in? Cross-site scripting, okay. 
Um, so the, uh, if you scroll down, the warnings for views are in another section. You can see um, we uh, aren't protecting against cross-site or cross-forgery. Um, a little bit lower. OK, so now we're into the cross-site scripting. These are warnings generated from the views, as you can see. Um, so here we're outputting some cookies. Um, if you go um, on the one right above that. So here you can see an example where the parameters are actually coming in from a variable from who knows where, probably the controller. Um, so what you see from Breakman is, OK, you're outputting params unsafe input. Uh, what you see in the actual code is just some variable literally called some variable. Um, and then you can see right below it, uh, in the code, it's calling escape once. So you will not get a warning about that because Breakman knows that you're escaping the code, or escaping the uh, user input. Um, anything else you guys might be interested in? Yes? Does it look for? Uh like, so the default Ruby escaping doesn't escape single quotes. So if you have like HTML attributes and single quotes, you can escape out of those, even with the default like, page function. It doesn't escape single quotes. Oh, right, because it's just HTML escape. Right, yeah. So if it's in like an attribute context with single quotes, <laughs> I'm just wondering if you guys look at that special case. It's kind of a common case. Um, no, we don't. Um, because it's not actually. It, Breakman wouldn't actually know that you're in that context. Um, but if you, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so that's something that possibly we could add later. Any other questions? Questions about how it works or things that may or may not find? Yes? What is the biggest program you So there is. Well, obviously we use it internally, but there is a program which I don't know exactly if we forked it and then reopen sourced it or if we open sourced it. It's called inventory without an I. And there's like hundreds of models and hundreds of views and just it's huge. Um, and we run it against that. Um, size is not really an issue unless you ran out of RAM. Um, it's not going to, so one thing, it's not going to look in stuff that is sort of outside of the usual Rails stack. So it's, it doesn't really look in like external libraries or anything like that. Um, the main thing that takes up time is it, for every action, it'll actually um, generate a new view using the variables from that action. So that's what takes up most of the time and resources. Um, but uh, so even against that, with you know hundreds of models and hundreds of views and hundreds, I think there might even be hundreds of controllers. I'm not sure. Uh, it takes a few minutes to run, so it's still pretty quick. And if you're doing it with continuous integration, I mean you won't notice that it takes a few minutes. Um, any other questions? Yeah. It will run under JRuby, yes. It will also run under the latest Rubinius. Um, and probably other places. Uh, it will run with 1.9, 1.8. Uh, you might have to use 1.87, but no. It will work with 1.86, too. Because we had an application that was using Ruby in her Cryos edition. Any other questions? Um, so one thing that uh, you should check out, which is on the our resources slide, uh, and it was turned into a uh, yeah. So it was turned into an OWASP project, which is the Rail Ruby on Rails security guide. It is out of date. It's basically for Rails 2. But um, I've actually seen it recommended places as a general web security guide. It's that good. So if you haven't checked it out yet, 
Um, it's on the Ruby on Rails guides page, or you can just search for it. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember the author's name, but it, it's a really good resource. It talks about you know session hijacking and all sorts of interesting things, not just related to Rails. All right, thank you guys. Yeah, I would like to hear your feedback and try that out. Yeah, if it, run it, download it, run it, and then file bugs. <laughs>